Hello. Well, I'm sorry, but I am eating something at the moment because it's been a bit of a rush. I had to go out today. I got home about 20 past eight, about 40 minutes ago, and I've had to feed my cat, get myself some dinner. Rush, 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 rush. So, and then this morning I'll get up and I'm going through all the videos again from yesterday. And then other videos are coming up. I thought, oh, God, I can't watch all these videos. I've got to go out. So I've been trying to catch up on that as well since coming in. So hello to everyone on Twitter. Or X, as I should say. Right. Right. As you know, yesterday I was doing my live when the video of Nancy Grace with the interview with Seth. Well, just come on. So we listened to about the podcast to be. And then the video itself got put up on YouTube. So we started to watch it. But it was getting late, so I, I had to finish it. I couldn't end it. But then, when I come off my live, there's another YouTuber doing a live. So I've gone over there, because she was having uh the mother katie and the stepfather chris on right very interesting that was very interesting but i did like the video by nancy grace i don't know if anyone's seen it it's i have got the link in my description from last night right and I've got the link again in the description for tomorrow. Because I like to put all, if I talk about a YouTuber or another video, I like to put their links in. So people can go and subscribe to them, join them. Or just watch their videos, their lives. So, anyway, let's get on. We've got a lot to get through. Right, now, the first one I want to show you is, I'm not, oh, sh oh my cat's off it, I'll just go again, can you hear my cat in the background, right, now, the, the one we're going to watch I haven't got his link in the description yet, but I will put it in because I wasn't planning on watching this one tonight. But I thought, no, you need to watch this. You need to watch this one. And I've seen some of his lives, uh, some of his what what he's put in writing. In fact, I've read some of that on here. So, I thought we'd start off with this video first, because that way you'll get to know a bit more about the other videos, if you don't already know. Anyway, hi MG. So, I was told about this video, I've sent the link, and I started to watch it before going out today, but couldn't watch it all, because I had to go out. So, only so many videos I can watch in a day when I've got to go out. Anyway, so this is Peter Hyatt, 
and he took he looks at the words I, I believe he's a, the one that looks at listen to the words to say how to talk and things like that so you watch this and we'll see what happens I'll join them go wake Hold on, I've got to put my headphones on because otherwise I'll keep forgetting to mute, unmute myself. <sighs> See, I have to wear headphones, otherwise, if I keep muting myself while there's a video up, I forget to unmute. And then I sit there for like two minutes or so talking. I think, you know what? I'm on mute. They can't hear the word I'm saying. Well, we can watch it tonight, MJ. I've actually read some of their work, what he, he talks about tonight. I've actually read some of that on here. So, hopefully. Welcome to this broadcast. Please let oh, me know God. if you can... Uh, oh, hear God. me and see the screen because I'm going to put a statement up in a oh, moment. God. Just anyone let me know that. Why isn't the sound done this? I'm talking about the case of missing 15 year old Sebastian done. Rogers. When my mouth uh, stopped prancing around like a ballerina on my screen. Nearly a month ago. I might be able to sort this out. Sound and done. I'd like to. to capture a few points for you and just comment on some of the language. Am I muted? Okay. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, turn that one up. Oh my Lord. This is what happens when you've got like three different videos up on your tab bar. You get them mixed up. So hopefully now I should be able to get this working. Um, how is my oh. audio, anybody? So why is this not working? <clears throat> well, I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Christ, but he isn't wanting me to never. Sleeping headphones are low battery. <laughs> oh my lord. So I can't use my headphones. Oh, let's see if we can get this one to work. Sometimes when I can't get the volume to come up on a video, I have to log out of YouTube. And then come back into it. No, no. Where's the video gone? Just playing to some of ours, no. Ah, right, here it is. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the beginning, otherwise you'll miss too much. Case of missing 15 year old Sebastian Rogers who went missing um, nearly a month ago. And I'd like to, to share a few points for you and just comment on some of the language. Um, how is my audio, anybody?
I think I'm getting there in terms of improving some of the quality of this, but uh, okay, good. Um, I'll start with the original interview that they did and uh, actually some of the behavioral analysis and, and, then, and some thoughts. Can you so, so analysis, the first thing we look for when it was for the uh, parents to cry out for the child. Absolutely just cry out for the child and to be um, what will appear to be at times distracted in interviews because they're spending all their effort and energy worried about what the child is experiencing at that moment. Just the pattern of, of innocent parents and, uh, you know, regrettably, but uh, beneficially in terms of analysis, in terms of understanding, there's been too many of these crimes to not have a, a, some form of data put together. And what we find is the, no different than if you were out shopping and your child wandered off, you'd start yelling and looking immediately. In this particular case, 15-year-old Sebastian um, is autistic. Uh, I don't think in any way it's mild. I think there were significant challenges for him. In this case, the uh, he lived with his mother and his stepfather, who's ready to move to his father's. And in that initial interview, uh, the, the media labeled it breaking their silence, which I thought was a, an accurate uh, tag to give it. And you ask yourself, well, why would anyone be silent when their child is missing? And I don't know of any circumstances where police have said, be silent. I, I think the, uh, the standards set long ago, polygraph me, get the media in front of me. I got to get my son or daughter there, face out there, that sort of thing. We didn't see that. We didn't see that. We had to have the silence broken. And so that first interview, uh, I can turn to analysis that mother and stepfather concealing information about, about the case, uh, the time period of the information that's missing was just before he went missing, just before he, uh, in their words, he left. And so I knew immediately in this case, but some other observations on the language. Um, mother and stepfather did not, not give an indication that they knew he was dead at least in the language. Um, with respect to others' opinions on that, um, I could be wrong on it, but uh, I'll explain why a little bit, um, why that is. So there was nothing for, for uh, about a week, no calling out, nothing. And then we saw this video, where to me, the, I'm not a body language expert, um, but it looked like a hostage video to me. You know, blink twice to tell me you're okay or you need rescue, where he dominated and he's all of the information. After that, it is as if they have gone on a tour. And it, what it really is, is an apologetic tour, apology means defense of the stepfather. Now, I'm going to comment on some of the interviews. I can't separate which one is which. There's, there's been too many. So they now, they got the memo. People were upset. They weren't speaking out. Now they're speaking out all the time, and the content is so important. The content is this. Chris is a great guy, and people should mind their own business, and a common theme for him is, you better respect me. In all that I've heard, other than at times a, an interviewer directly asking, I've not heard Chris speak of what his stepson is it going through while missing. Chris perceives himself as a victim, and he's ready to fight. Uh, I know that some of the interviews are, are very difficult to watch or listen to because the interviewers just talk and talk and talk, and they don't 
don't understand. They don't hold the information. He does. And now that he's allowing her to speak, she does. Let them speak. Let them speak for themselves. When someone asks a compound question, it allows the, the person being interviewed to pick and choose what he would like when they ask a multi-compound question or go on in a moralistic sense. Okay? There's no reason to moralize in a case like this. A child is missing. We, we want the information. But when they ask the, uh, a multi-compound question, very likely the subject of the interview, if he has this, which, which Chris is now, he's going to pick up on one of those things and use it for an answer because they're suggesting answers. So it's, it's frustrating. They don't know that they don't have training in that. Um, and they'll go on about some personal experience and they think they're building rapport. Not with him. I said recently to someone, I've interviewed him. I interviewed him. What I that is I've hundreds of times interviewed controlled abusers. And almost always they're a step parent or a boyfriend. And his language gives us a lot. So this morning I was listening to a, yet another interview. And, the, you know, the usual frustration of some of the is tainted by the interviewer. Uh, fast forward past the interviewer's monologue. Uh, you know, it, it could be difficult to get any type of a pure answer. When he goes off for himself, then we get some. And this time, um, and you're seeing it more now, she's allowed to speak. And speak she does. So there are some things I want to talk about that. Um, and some of the things they said that are, are revelatory. So I, I had posted, I post on X, which is, uh, was Twitter, short commentary, um, a little bit of analysis, that sort of thing about my views of the case. In the case where not just repetitive, which is sensitive, but they spoke reliably that he walked out the door. And of course, some with training will question about why a door and the door is very sensitive. As they're speaking now, they're still saying that. And consider they may be telling the truth. And what they may be concealing, what I believe they're concealing, is an altercation, some form, escalation that was more than just that Sunday, that goes back and, and part of the history for at least, I, I think, at least two years. Uh, and I'll get to some of, some of that with questions. So one of the things I posted on uh, X was that Child Protective Services should be fully engaged here in a full investigation, and they should interview everyone including the paternal grandmother, Seth's mother. She has said she has information. She needs to be interviewed. She needs to be heard. She should have been interviewed by law enforcement, but uh, no less, child protective services know that. One of the things that happens with a missing child case, you say, well, why would child protective services get involved in a child case? Because we don't know what caused the child to go missing. Now, let's say the child is a, a victim of kidnapping. Were the parents neglectful that someone was able to get into the house? Well, how could they be neglectful if someone broke into their house? Perhaps they were intoxicated. These are things that have to be known. Also, patterns of behavior have to be known. So the interviews would be with a missing child case to find out if that child is found should that child go back to this house again? Now, I covered uh, quite a bit uh, a while back on Summer Wells' case. And the drug involvement alone would invite all sorts of trouble onto that property. And there was the language from the, uh, the father that, that indicates sexual abuse. And it was a really bad case. And she's still 
uh, technically missing. So we know is the child in jeopardy if the child returns to this home? So we need to know what the home is like. We need to know the quality of the relationship between mother and child. We need to learn the history. That means, uh, in this particular case, mother, stepfather, bio dad, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, coaches, pediatrician, neighbors, anyone. And one of the questions is asked, do you have concerns? And may learn is, um, yeah, we've had concerns. Or no, I don't let my my own son go over there and, and hear the reasons why. And um, so it's, it's not accusatory towards anyone. It's the gathering of information. We need to know. For instance, have you had concerns? He opens a chart and maybe there's red marks there. I've, or I've addressed them. And my follow-up question to the pediatrician would be, have you met the stepfather? What was your impression? Because uh, he leaves quite an impression. So the child services, um, Department of Children and Family, whatever it's called in, in different states, should immediately and uh, Seth's mother should have been interviewed right from the start, both law enforcement and in Child Protective Services. Um, most of my viewers know that I'm, I'm very slow to criticize law enforcement. Uh, oftentimes, there's things behind the scenes that, that we don't know of, that, that sort of thing. This should have been done. This should have been done. The history is so important. Um, I had said recently, there's, there's no way this guy doesn't have Child Protective Services history. No way. And then I learned this morning from listening to that interview that apparently he set up or he insisted upon. He does have CPS history. And what he said was in two states, almost as if he's bragging about it. What he's doing is he's getting out in front of it. He'll answer the accusation before it hits him. And as people who are experienced with being investigated for child abuse understand the Child Protective Services can't speak publicly about it. So um, the parent or step-parent investigated can say anything they want, and they do. And the caseworker, the, the department that handles this, they can't speak to it anyway. So there's nothing they can say. It's all one-sided. They can give information with police, though, and should. So what does the stepfather's language reveal? And one of my associates, Jenny, did an excellent job on a, a, called a psycholinguistic profile, a profile based on the language. Um, and I alluded to this when I said, um, I've interviewed, I've interviewed him a hundred times, meaning that I, there's a pattern that emerges. He has the classic language of, of an abuser. Um, and what I mean by classic is that it's repetitive, it's patterned, and it's easy to spot. If, if someone's experiencing that, they're going to know right away. Yeah, there we go. And when he was talking this, uh, well, for me, it was this morning, but maybe it was last night when it was aired. Um, he confirmed everything that Jenny wrote about. He confirmed it about being crystal clear, that emphatic forcefulness, the aggressiveness. Some of the descriptions people have used, including Jenny, combative, authorit authoritarian. He is also acutely defensive. This is a guy that does not like to be insulted. And he went on and on and on. And he's done that defending himself. He ended up admitting that he has, uh, you know, nothing to hide. And then, of course, he doesn't answer questions. But in this particular case, he did about his marriages. This is his fifth marriage. And if you've seen some of the transcripts from Facebook, he's on his fifth marriage giving marital advice. That's insight into personality. 
I don't care how many times we've been married. I, I care about this poor, poor kid. But it, what matters is what he's revealing. He's had two that he admits up to now, at least uh, two CPS investigation, or at least in two states. I think there might, might be more. At one point, he was asked about Sebastian coming between them, in a, in a sense, to, to protect his mom. And he gave a very strong laugh, a very strong laugh. Let's see if I can get that. A strong laugh. And um, I was listening to that. I said, oh, here's the tough guy. Here's the tough guy. Here's the guy that that uh, laughs off that someone would need to come between him. I don't know. Oh, he's come between him. I, I think that might have come from the dad um, as he's speaking more. We also learned um, how much he dismisses questions that are relevant. They were intelligent questions being asked over several interviews. One question that he became uh, very dismissive of was he was asked, do you lock your refrigerator? And he acted as if it was absurd. It was the mother talking about that all uh, Sebastian ate was sugar, which means the glucose roller coaster for him and his, and his uh, dysregulated emotions. And so that was a good question to ask. It's one of the questions I thought, hey, someone's paying attention. Someone may have some experience there. Because there's all sorts of issues around locking a refrigerator. Sometimes it's for the child's own safety. Sometimes it's because they're they're being treated cruelly. Um, but it's it's quite nuanced. It was a great question. Another person asked, "How long have you been married?" And, it, and what he says is that has nothing to do with the investigation. It has everything to do with the investigation. Your demeanor, your relationship, what the household is like. If you're saying that he walked out the house, and I think. You're telling the truth there. If you're saying he walked out, we want to know why. And all these point to the reason why. Um, the language where he keeps talking about how brash he is, he's brash while the stepson is missing. And when someone says that, and you, you probably heard this in different phrases. Hey, I really tell it like it is. Okay, so, so you are someone who irritates others and brags about it. You're giving yourself a license to be that way, to be angry. No, this guy's got some real anger issues. Rolling, he's aggressive. Um, the mockery of of Sebastian was rough, I think, to hear. Everything didn't say, let's see, let's, let's prove it. I've heard him speak uh, a lot now for concern for himself. I haven't heard anything about concern for Sebastian. It doesn't mean he killed him. It means he cares about himself. I think Sebastian, what, you know, what we're seeing in the language or hearing is what Sebastian lived under. And I think Seth's telling the truth that Sebastian didn't wear a diaper at his house, but at the mother's house. That speaks to anxiety and could be worse. Uh, I don't want to get into that now, but in the, in the least, it can speak to anxiety of, of being a 15-year-old under this super insecure acutely defensive, controlling, narcissistic, aggressive, very little man, which may indicate that Sebastian either left on his own or was put out by the mom. I'm not beyond that one yet. Let me give you a, a reason, just a, it's a hint. If I can. Just a small thing that I heard her say that I was concerned about. 
he went outside to take the garbage because it was his chore. And what those that are in training will recognize is that there is much sensitivity there. Okay, she explains why he went outside, and you'll see this. This is the explanation of why he went outside. Then she doubles up on it. I heard that it's very sensitive, and it's often a sensitivity that is indicative of deliberately withheld information. You didn't, once you told us why he went outside, we're done. You didn't have to double up on it. She did. She felt the need to double up on it. I thought to myself, did she lock him out? without his shoes at the behest, I think, of the stepfather who shows no empathy. He has shown no empathy. He may respond when, when he's fed something, but when he's speaking freely, when he's choosing his own words, when he is now off talking, he doesn't show empathy. Did he own Tell mother, lock him out. Is that why she has this, what we call like a hyper need to explain why he was out there? His stepson is missing. He called his stepson a liar. And Chris is the, the victim. CPS isn't going to answer that. So they went from not speaking to now not stop speaking. Um, he also said on this, there's someone that does a YouTube channel that he doesn't like. And um, this is his theme, that he's given these interviews to make things crystal clear, of course, the emphasis, but supposedly to get his stepson's name and face out there still. And then he says, but what do you do with this one fellow? Uh, making money off it. And you see in some of these interviews, thank you for your $10. And, you know, it, it seems like a, a televangelist type of deal. And it, it's distasteful. Would that stop you from getting your missing child? name and face out there, would you really care? And then he demands respect. He demanded it from, some, from the audience. He's been some people he has no control over. He's trying to control the narrative. So my uh, opinion on what happened is that he got locked out and both are responsible. And I think there's much more in terms of domestic violence and child protective services involvement than his minimizing statement about it, much more. Um, this is an angry man. He doesn't, he's not afraid to show his anger. He'll call himself brash over and over and over. The, the, um, the one thing I found was scripted was the mother is really repeating. And he said, love you, mama. And I think some people don't understand why I flagged that, why it's so important. Um, Emily, a sign that someone has a need to persuade what a wonderful relationship we have. It's not that you or I say, I love you to your children or your children say it. That's it's, and make it public repeatedly. So um, I can say, uh, and he said, I love you, Mama, and then totally forget about supposedly searching the house and getting in the car and driving around. Because the priority is self-defense. I think they caused his disappearance 
because of an abusive household that he was raised in. He's a classic, the language of a classic abuser. And the targets are generally women and women and children. Let me if there any questions or any rebuttals, please. Um, I don't know what happened, and I don't know if he's alive. You know, like anyone else, you lose hope. The stepfather's language. Um, he doesn't offer any hope. He's he was fed that a couple of times by a couple of interviewers, but he doesn't offer any help. It's natural that after all this time that he would be the first to crack. Based on his language, he did not have a good relationship with Sebastian. Based on his language. So he'd be the first um, one of denial, whereas you'll, you'll hear the father who will come probably second. And the mother is still speaking as if he's alive. Um, and again, with respect to those who have the opinion that there was more direct involvement, but I think that he was put out. I think it was discipline at this point. And, you know, if more information comes out, if they get some clean interviews, it may look differently. But if I am with Child Protective, if I am with the law enforcement, I'm looking at an abusive household that Sebastian wanted to get away from. Some of your theories or questions, let's see if I can take them here. Again, a lot of the questions are going to be, I don't know. Right. I love this guy. I really do. Because he's just hit the nail on the head with that CP. You know what I mean? I don't think I can even mention that guy's name on my on my channel no more. It'll be CP. Because I think something happens someday. I've said it from day one. Something happens someday. Right? Because if he was going to walk out on his own, right, leave or run away, to put shoes on, to put a coat on, a jacket or something, right, he would have took, he would have took the money that was in his bedroom. In like, um, he made a, a deposit thing, which he used to keep his money in, and then deposit, take money out, you know what I mean? Like one of them bank machines, right? He would have took his money, which meant he would have took his wallet, right? So he didn't take none of that, and he would have took his phone, because... I just know he would have phoned his dad. He would have phoned his dad. Or someone else who could come and help him. Because, yeah, okay, his dad said, did say, he knows that when he, I don't have him on the weekends, I'm working. So perhaps he wouldn't have phoned his dad on a Sunday. Right? Perhaps there was someone else he would have phoned. We don't know. Because they're not telling us. Now, I watched that Nancy Grace last night, and I thought she was brilliant. I love her. She's another one I love to watch. Right? Because she gets all the professionals on her show, all the professionals that need to talk about it, and they break it down. And if you want to go on any YouTuber's page, go on hers. If you've got something to get out there, like a missing child or something like that, then you go on her site. Go to her. Right? Then, you come up my life last night after watching the Nancy Grace and some of the video as well. And there's another YouTuber, as I said, who had Katie, the mother, and CP on. Now, I want to just show you some clips of that, right? And hopefully I'll find the right clip as well, which will leave you gobsmacked, jaw-dropping. Because I must admit, when I heard this last night, 
I'm watching it and I'm thinking, did I just hear him say that? Did I hear her say that? No, no, can't be. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I think the reason he's coming out with this information now is because this is the information I believe the grandmother has got on him. I believe the reason he's come out about, because on this YouTube site, and I'll, I'll tell you, the link is in the description, Smiley's will. I love, I love Smiley. I really do. Right? And I haven't watched her lately because I've been so busy with this case and trying to find things out about it. You know what I mean? So when I was watching it last night, I thought, oh, I haven't watched it for ages. I'll go over and watch it. Even though it was another interview with the parents, I thought, yeah, I'll go and watch it because it's smiling. And you'll see a difference in him. When it's just him, Katie, and Smiley talking, he's all a charmer. He's like a little charmer, getting all the women on his, right? But I'm sorry, CP, you can't fall off women. You can't. We know exactly what you're like. And I've said from day one, he said, oh, oh, I'll just get so mad. Anyway, I'm going to put this up. I'd just like to check, give a big shout out to Smiley. Right. And I think I need to go back a little bit. Yeah. Just listen to, well, just play little clips of it because it's more what i'll hide the comments right but right. again it's you been said again. That, that katie has mm. struck oh, and that, again that's a long again. i wasn't there so okay, well, every no. time i put um, it on silent and i wasn't there either for the record so. <laughs> it won't i'm not catching my wine i can't move Oh, well. Well, I'm going to have to come out of YouTube again and go back into it because for some reason when I put it on mute on the task bar right it doesn't it won't play for me again Hopefully it's going to... Right. Just listen to how he is on this. I just want to make sure it's sharing everything. So... I the comments because that's private in my eyes. Oh come on. Come on mate. Play. That's it, that's it. Sebastian would step in and I didn't even know if he was talking about that or not because I heard about that separate. Come on. I'm fucking up with my well, just my head in. Did Sebastian have tantrums at all? Oh is yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's a, he's he's a kid. I mean, it, it's even when I came in the picture. I mean, his tantrums were pretty bad. Um, I mean, to the point. I mean, he so. I'm not, I'm not dragging Seth, 
my husband's mom, his sister, my wife. I'm not dragging people through the mud. So what is in the past is the past. And that really needs to die. And I'm saying that for everybody to hear, to include all parties involved with this situation. The past is a past that needs to die. Let it be. Um, but they at keep the same time. Rachel, they keep saying, who's Rachel? So you want to answer that for you? Tell them to yes, the past. Yes. Okay. So I got no problem. Rachel is my I third. Me. I didn't know about Rachel. So. No, no, no. So here, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll make this easy for you. So I've been married five times. I'm on my fifth wife and she's going to say you're final. So let me make that clear. She's probably going to yell at me later that I didn't say final. Um, but I've been married five times. Okay. First time her name was Vanessa. Second time her name was Stephanie. Third time her name was Rachel. Fourth time, her name is Nina. And I'll okay. gladly answer any question. For ex-wives, three of them to this day, I can actually pick up the phone, call, and we can have conversations. That's how good my fourth ex-wife, which is the one I have. Lined up. Sometimes we can have cordial conversations. Sometimes we cannot. I will make that possible. Like, I'll leave that there. That's why we go to court. They they keep saying something about the story of Rachel. What is the story of Rachel? The story of Rachel. Um, maybe, maybe how y'all met and how, maybe how long did y'all, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. This is the first time I'm hearing about Rachel because I haven't dug in that deep into anything. I'm just, I don't know. Like, how long was y'all married maybe and how was your relationship do y'all have any kids i, I don't know no. but now here he's been really nice is he not he's been really nice but we know what he's like we know he's um, what's the word i'm looking for a narcissist no i don't know if it's a narcissist peter hyatt said he's a narcissist and i when he's we, saying that about him we go go for it go on because we all know everyone who's been watching these interviews has seen it for themselves. How he's controlling. He's he's gotta be the centre of the attention. He's gotta be it's as I said, it's all about me, 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 me. It's me. I'm here, it's me. Right? And if you don't fall in line with that and right he won't be happy now i was talking to my son today about this <laughs> and he said why why don't you have him on your show on your tube i said hey my channel isn't big enough really for that i don't get enough viewers for that i said i probably would after having him on my channel but at the moment, it's not big enough. And I don't want people just to come on my channel just because of a certain, you know what I mean? Anyway, so um, I said, plus, the fact is, I wouldn't take none of that bullshit he's giving. If, you, if I have showed my face like Smiley does, right? I, you see me eye rolling. You see my eyes literally rolling. Not kicking. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'd literally be eye rolling. Right? Now, um, a friend of mine she brought me a brilliant t shirt for my birthday. Right? And it's got on it. Hold on. I love this t shirt. Just getting it out the back. Oh, so I can read what's got on it. I've been meaning to buy one of these myself. So it's got on it. I'm not responsible. I'm not responsible for what my face does when you talk. Right? Now that's me. I I roll everything. So 
I said, plus, I'll tell in the, to the people in the chat. Come on. Here's your time. Get them hard questions out now. Get them in. Get them in. And I will literally roll every question. Unless it was repeated. If it's a repeat question, then I wouldn't pull it up. But any question that come up, I would literally throw at him. And if he kept saying, I can't answer that, or referring to the TBI, or referring to this other thing about his medication, then I'd go, no, 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 don't hide beyond them. Don't hide beyond them. You said you can answer these questions. Answer these questions. I said, so, <laughs> my son, my son knew, knew me, and he just smiled, thought, yeah, he, I would be like that. I really would. All right? So I wouldn't let him try and get away with hiding behind. So, well, TBI has said everything on their updated page. We, you know what I mean? It hasn't cleared them. You go onto the TBI page, right? It does not clear them. It just says they have been cooperative and whatever in everything we've asked. Yeah? But it doesn't clear them. They have not publicly stood there and said, well, let's get this straight. The mother and the stepfather of Sebastian Rogers has been cleared. Please don't go after the family. Right? They have been cleared. They're not involved. But they haven't said that. And this has reminded me so much of another case in Tennessee. Is it in Tennessee? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, right. Sun and Moon, Utah Wells. It's been three years now, and the police and the TBI have still not come out and said the mother and father of Sun and Moon, Utah Wells, has been cleared. They haven't cleared no one. Everyone, even the neighbours, their friends, whoever they knew, they have not cleared. Hi. So everyone you know about, if you follow the Sun and Moon Utah Wells, it's like a rabbit hole. There's everyone. There's one, two, three, at least three neighbours on that road, who I believe has not been cleared, plus the mum and dad. You know what I mean? Plus the, the people who he, the father worked with, sort of thing. But those directly involved have not been cleared and this is the same those directly involved have not been cleared Seth was asked on oh, Nancy Grace did you do a polygraph he said no right she said would you do a polygraph he said I offered first I offered straight away to do a polygraph and I said no we don't need one but they've had one of Katie, but he said he wasn't sure about Chris. He don't know if Chris did one. Right? Now, I'm here to talk about that Nancy, Nancy Grace interview. And um, they said they wasn't invited. Right? Now, after this one, which I watched this morning, I had to watch it this morning, I had to go to bed, it was like gone three o'clock before I went to bed, and this was still going at three o'clock my time. I I need sleep, I've only had three hours sleep since yesterday, you know what I mean? So I thought I need to get some sleep. So when I got up, I seen another YouTuber, great guy, and he had, he was talking about what happened on this, right? And uh, Seth Rogers come up on his panel, right? And they asked him about the Nancy Grace interview. And Seth said, please reach out to the mother and stepfather as well, right? Well, apparently they only wanted 
the bio parents, the biological parents on the interview. Right, which just meant Katie and Seth. I'm here. I'm sure it's on this one. Uh, because when Steph was talking about it last night, oh, this moment I watched it on this other YouTuber's channel, he said they had reached out to them, but they had not got back to them. They hadn't replied. Now on here, this show, they said they did reach out, we did reach back out, but we never heard back of them. Now who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe two people who we know have been lying from day one, especially the stepfather, or are we going to, and not believe Nancy, or are we going to believe Nancy over those two? Me, I'm going to believe Nancy. I believe Nancy did reach out to them, and I believe they never returned the call. So for them to sit there and say, we wasn't invited. It's just my freaking nothing. It's so annoying. Anyway, we'll carry on. No, I'm just no, no. I, I have one biological child in this world. One. One. That was my fourth one. one. Okay. Uh, the story with Rachel's real simple. Uh, we met. Um, we were all friends. We moved into, we shared an apartment together. That was a two bedroom, two bath. Um, and somehow or another, we wound up starting a relationship. Like things just happened. I mean, it, it whatever. So yeah. we got married. Um, and Rachel took a job where she was working down in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, as a civilian. Mm -hmm. And while she was down in Guantanamo Bay, I guess pers promiscuity got the best of her and she decided to be unfaithful. Mm -hmm. We ended that relationship. Um, she went back to Cuba. You know, I... Uh, Packed up the house. I put all her stuff in a storage unit. Gave one of her friends that lived in the area the key. Told her the combo. Set up the payment plan for her, everything like that. Um, you know, as far as I know, she lives. I think it's in New Orleans now. Um, and I think she she just had a second child, so she's got a little boy and I think a little girl now. Were you part of any of your any any? the stepchildren's lives there in your other marriages yes my my fourth wife nina she has two mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. uh those children's names don't even ask them i'm not telling you because no, 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 i don't not. know what people digging into that they don't need to be those no, kids are not being drinking do that. So. yeah um yes i was very much involved uh during the marriage well her and i were together mm -hmm. with the kids' lives um, it was a rough marriage. I mean, from, from the word go, Nina and I both knew we probably should have never got married, but we did, you know, um, but I mean, still to this day, like I said, when things are good, I don't have a problem talking with the other two kids at all. You know, occasionally I see them in FaceTime videos when I'm talking with my daughter. Yeah, you know, but it's not. It, I, you know, they're good kids. They really are. So, did Sebastian have any friends that he ever uh, brought over to the house? Like that, y'all allowed? Like, um, and it could be like I heard Katie say somewhere too. Maybe it was in one of the Facebook groups, but it was in writing. I didn't. Sorry, my internet is playing up. I think it's because of the high winds. 
don't know why that was affected because it's all underground. But when we really have high winds, probably the signal, you know what I mean? But we have a lot of trouble with the internet. Anyway, so he's been very nice here and he's talking about his ex wife, right? I really hear her say it, but um, so I'm going to just go forward a little bit. Yeah. We were not invited. We didn't know about it until after. Okay. We are going to go back. Right. With the children that are similar, um, they tend to have different interests. Sebastian gets very um, uh, like single he... single mind tracked. Like if he's yeah. if he's wanting to talk about like Minecraft, then he wants you to be. 100% all about the Minecraft and so a lot of times like other children will be like yeah that's cool but I want to do this and and he'll do it. so they wind up getting frustrated with each other and that's where a lot of his like struggles making friends come into play is and because personal he personal yeah personal space is also another part of it where he he um disregards like what we call the personal bubble Mm -hmm. um just because he just doesn't have that awareness like he'll just be right here in your face <laughs> um but he's capable of getting along with other kids i mean and he does but typically for shorter periods of time um, <coughs> at school he does pretty well with a lot of the kids um but even that you know they have to take breaks you know because not him but ever not just him but you know even the other kids they they each have their unique interests and their unique ways of thinking and doing things. And so they, they get to each other and they have fun and then, you know, something will happen and one or both will get frustrated. And so they got to, you know, time out and whatnot. Um, you know, we have met um, some kids, especially like, cause I like to take them out and go do things, especially in like public settings, like the festivals and, and bowling and stuff like that to get them out and get them, you know, it gives an opportunity to interact and work on, those uh like kind of social skills and and meeting people and and being appropriate when meeting people responding you know with appropriate emotions and stances you know someone be polite and says love to you to match that energy and not come at a different energy you know and we do we have like a scale that we work on you know like what is the problem that's frustrating you? You know, is it like a zero, one, two, three? And then, okay, well, what's your response to that, you know, type thing? So, um, yes, he has interact and does interact with other children and people, but he, he struggles to form those, like, stronger bonds with people. Mm -hmm. Was he starting to notice girls yet? I think so, although he's in denial. He yeah. doesn't want to tell mama that he likes girls. Yeah. Um, did, were y'all a part of a church or anything like that? Yes. So we we attend. Um, so hold on. We attend. Church. Yes, we. Yes, we do attend church. Now, are we tied to one particular church more so than others? Probably not. Um, but we, if we go, we tend to frequent the one called Freedom Church. It's up to Gallatin, Tennessee. Mm hmm. Is that, did Sebastian like that? Did he like to go and? Um, yeah, when he was they, in church, so the kids area, oh my God. Um, they've got a <laughs> phenomenal youth program. Yeah. I bet he liked to sing and, and uh, stuff like that, right? He likes dance. to dance. Yeah, dance. I mean, <laughs> now, granted, gr he, granted he, what you call dancing, what I call dancing, and what he calls dancing totally different <laughs> he's he's definitely got a unique rhythm yeah yeah oh but he does love he loves to dance yeah and that makes me think i mean you know just the music he said he liked eye of the tiger and different things i mean oh it just makes me you know it just makes me smile he's he's i just want them i want them to find him i mean and i know you do too it's just we gotta 
ask these questions and we got to look and search. Somebody was saying on uh, the Nancy Grace today. And then, by the way, is there any reason why y'all didn't go on that show today too? We were not invited. We didn't know about it until after. Okay. Cause that's, that's, Did you hear that? They wasn't invited. Yes, they would because Seth said when they got into Pippin, he said, please reach out to the mother and the stepfather for them as well to come up. Right? But then they told Seth they only wanted the bio parents, which was himself and the mother. Right? They reached out to them, but they didn't reply back. So, liar, liar, pants on fire. What I heard. Yes, they, they said that he did throw tantrums. They did say that. Um, but, um, okay, so um, they, there was a guy on there that said, and I'm sure y'all watched it, that said um, everything needs to be re-looked at, researched, but it everything needs to be spread out more, more air and everything out. Well, um, if you don't mind me, uh, so I don't know how to say this any other way. And I, please forgive me because it's going to sound, like say it. say well, it. it's gonna sound very jerkish, but I don't want softball questions. People wanted to ask me the hard questions. By golly, let's get these hard questions out. Uh, <laughs> sorry but i just well uh ha, let, let me start okay ha, have you ever had cps called on you before yes okay okay and you don't have to go into it elaborate or anything like that i, I just that was the question that i had um and that happens you know sometimes especially when you have a um child who is you know has special needs and stuff that's hard I've had it, well i'll be honest with you i've i've, I've had cps called on me in two states, mm -hmm. New Mexico and Tennessee. And so had so and that did that include with Sebastian? Tennessee was Sebastian, yes. Okay. I mean, in fact, Sebastian here, I'll just like I said, I got nothing to hide. So Sebastian went to school one day because he we were at the house, he got, got in trouble, he didn't have a belt on. I was like, Where's your belt? And got it. And here we are. God, God, it's on you. Right. We are now coming up to the part which is jaw dropping. And oh my God. And it is also, could also be triggering. So please, if it is, as soon as you hear me and it's triggering, just walk away. Just walk away. Okay? What? Got to got him. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher, they're mandatory reporters. So the teacher reports and everything out. Well, um, <clears throat> if you don't mind me, uh, so I don't know how to say this any other way. And I, please forgive me because it's going to sound like to say it. Say well, it. It's going to sound very jerkish, but I don't want softball questions. People wanted to ask me the hard questions. By golly, let's get these hard questions out. <laughs> Sorry, but I just. Well, uh, ha, let, let me start. Okay. Ha, have you ever had CPS called on you before? Yes. Okay. Okay. And you don't have to go into it elaborate or anything like that. I, I just, that was the question that I had. Um, and that happens, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a um, child who is, 
you know, has special needs and stuff. That's hard. I've had it, well, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've, I've had CPS call to me in two states, mm-hmm. New Mexico and Tennessee. And so had, so, and that, did that include with Sebastian? Tennessee was Sebastian. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In fact, Sebastian here, I'll just, like I said, I got nothing to hide. So Sebastian went to school one day because he, we were at the house. He got in trouble. He didn't have a belt on. I was like, where's your belt? And got it. Whack. Kind of got him. So he goes to school and he tells the teacher, they're mandatory reporters. So the teacher reports it. Mm-hmm. That afternoon, CPS shows up to the house while we're actually sitting down to eat dinner. Now, mind you, 15 year old child, he's not real happy because he's in trouble, punished. So he shows, you know, he makes a report, they come to the house. And the lady who comes to the house is the same lady we've had. uh, She's had a case before. Um, Now, the case that was before was something that didn't even didn't even happen. And it's like three stories that was shoved into one. And when they finally got it debunked, they were like, "Oh, he's just he just he got he got so mixed up in telling one story, it mixed into three and it caused a commotion." Well, that got they canceled that out. So the one on me, she shows up, and uh, I said, hey, how you doing? It's her again. She's like, oh, hey. She's hey, I, I'm already, don't, she's like, don't tell me anything, but I'm going to tell you what I know happened. And I said, okay. She goes, boom, boom, boom. She told me exactly what happened. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, oh, my God. I said, yes, ma'am. This, this is how it's been. Sebastian thought by telling on me, making it sound like I was so horrible. Oh, you cut out. You cut out just a minute. Um, you cut out. I can, oh, there you are. Okay. That I was going to get in trouble over something stupid. And I was like, no, Sebastian, you got punished, man. You, you got punished. And he was like, but, but, and I was like, you got punished. And the lady took him outside. She goes, Sebastian, just because you get in trouble and you get punished, you need to understand when you go and you say things about people and you lie and you fabricate things and you make it sound worse than what it is, sir, you can get in trouble for that. So we had had a, that happen. Now, I don't agree with that social worker or whatever saying what she did if she did say that because that is putting the fear of god into a child who doesn't understand the what he's doing is wrong she's put the fear of fucking god into a child right now listen to the rest and the lady was like i am so sorry and i said no he's just a child he's upset it is what it is i'm okay with it mm-hmm. you know he sat that back down at the dinner table and was like, like see eat your food <laughs> and yeah. we went back and everything fine yeah uh, that girl wants to know what was he wearing when uh, they went to dinner. Maybe he returned if it was his favorite place, I guess, to the restaurant. Katie, uh, you remember? We may have lost her. Oh. Um, hmm. I don't know. Yeah, she's been going in and out. Okay, we'll say we'll save that. I'll just leave it up there so I don't forget or whatever. Um, was there a life insurance policy on him? I know people's been wanting to ask that. I'll just get that out of the way. Not that that's any of our business, but I guess if it has to do with him missing, that's what, why they want to know. It's just a simple yes or no. You don't. We don't have to go into whatever. And that could be for if you. I think whenever they go quiet, right, 
someone else said it in the chat last night. They keep muting. Like, I mute when I put the video back on. Otherwise, you get a, a replay back. Right? So, I think now muting. And I think now, like, when he was talking about something before he went off, before before he told us about the social work coming up, he went off, did he not? He went quiet. And I think now she's telling all his, they're talking to each other and working out the story, sort of thing. Right. I'm going to fast go forward a little bit. So now you, you're not really you, being honest. Wait a minute. You asked me because I'll read the message. Simple yes or no. You don't. We don't have to go into whatever. And that could be for if you know whether he's got it from his real dad, you or uh, you know anybody. I'm just saying. Does anybody know if there's one floating around out there anywhere? His father has one on him. Okay. That's good enough. Um, now, oh, Chris just dropped off again. Let me see if I can put this back in here. Sorry. And he may be back too. <laughs> Let's see. Paste. I'm sorry. I have to do it. Y'all, for clarification, no, I did not allow him to beat my son with a belt. He did not beat my son with a belt. Um, okay. Uh, Josh wants to call in real fast. Let's see. Hold on a minute. Okay, hold on. Just call. Okay. Um, Josh wants to call. Now, you just heard her say, no, I do not let him hit my son or discipline my son with a, with a belt. Right? She just said it. Right? Now, you're going to see him, his whole demeanour change in a minute. When Josh gets up there on stage, on the platform, his whole demeanour changes. As you notice, he's been nice and calm, laughing and joking about, right? If we all know he's a facile dog, whatever you like to say it is, it's a load of BS, in my words. But that, you watch, listen to this thing. Call in real fast. He's been wanting to ask a question, and I guess he can't get me to see it or something. So so I just told him to call real fast if that's okay. Um, he texts me and I just happen to see it if that's okay. And nobody take this. Um, I'm trying to get this link back out. So Chris, um, what, what kind of stuff? Oh, no. Oh, and he's done. <laughs> he's probably going crazy i put the wrong phone number in there um anyway oh there he is oh there he is he's like he's gonna come up here just a second josh sorry i put the wrong phone i put the wrong number in there That's, can you hear me i can yeah i put the wrong number in there so okay is chris, is chris still here uh, uh, he, he dropped the link again. He fell down, but I, yeah, go ahead. Okay. When I spoke, when I was talking to Chris earlier and him and I were messaging, uh, and I asked him about DCS and he said, the only case that DCS has open is Here because Sebastian ran away. Okay. Yeah, sorry about true. that. Yeah, Chris, Josh was going to yes, call me. I accidentally punched a 
three instead of a two or whatever. And he jumped up here on panel. And, uh, he wanted to ask you something, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Far away, man. <laughs> well, so so you and I, had we, we had messaged earlier on Facebook, and I had asked you about DCS, and you said that there were no, no other interactions with uh, CPS or DCS except for Sebastian going missing, which I then told you, but that, that's not mandatory necessarily unless CPS was already involved. So now, you're not really you, being honest. Wait a minute. You asked me, because I'll read the messages to everybody in God and country. You asked me if there was an active CPS case on Sebastian. That's what you asked. And I told you, yes, there was. Because the sheriff's department told us that they had to report it because he was missing. That's what you asked. Now, you also started to ask if there was another case, and there was no other case that I know of that's active. That's what you asked. You know, to say he's changed his own demeanor, it's like, okay, it's a guy now. It's a guy. It's a man. He won't talk with men openly like this. Right? He won't. And because he knows the men won't stand for his BS. Right? And there's one particular YouTuber he will not talk to. Right? Because he's turned around and said, I don't, I, won't come, I don't want to talk to you because you've just been making money off me, off Sebastian. Yet he'll go on other YouTubers, right? And they get paid because you get paid so much anyway for how many views, how many likes you get things each month. Once you've got a certain amount, you can have uh, subs. You can start getting paid off YouTube. Right? You get paid because you have the adverts. At the moment, I'm, I'm paying where I don't have no adverts on any of my lives. If you get adverts while watching a live, then please tell me because you shouldn't be getting your adverts. I'm paying the extra money each month so we don't get any adverts. But once I can go monetize, I might drop down. Because whether you're, once you're monetized, monetized, they will still put adverts in. Even though you're paying to not have adverts, they will still put adverts through. So if they're going to do that, then I might as well just go from the basic level, right? And I would say, okay, are you going to put the adverts on? I might as well get paid for it because if I'm paying that extra each month to not have adverts, right? And then YouTube, once I monetize my site and whatever, right? YouTube then start putting adverts out. They won't pay me because I'm paying not to have adverts. So they won't pay me if they even, even if they do put adverts on my lives on my videos so if they're gonna put adverts on i might as well get some money off them back off them through the adverts you know what i mean so i'll just drop down to a lower level and then you will get adverts once i get monetized but it's all demeanor changed Gosh. Yeah, I'm here. So, like I said, sir, I'm brash. I'm to the point. Be respectful. Can you hear and me? And I will tell you, and I'll be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth. I got nothing to hide. Can, did, you, did you hear what I said? Yeah, he said, okay. Can you hear him, Josh? I can hear him, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you now. Go ahead. I just said, well, in the messages that I asked that it was pertaining to Sebastian's 
uh, school, right? Like you just said. And you said, no, other than him going missing, no, yes. I don't know. I don't, I can't hear. Uh, maybe that. He didn't say anything. No, he's going. Can you hear him, Chris? Can you hear Hello? him? Yeah, okay. I can now. I can now. Okay. Sorry. So you didn't ask, you asked about active cases. That's what you asked about. And I answered your question. You did. You answered my question. Hello. Hello. Hey, you answered his question. I can hear you. Can you hear him, Josh? Okay. Jack can't hear him. <laughs> okay. Can y'all so, I think so he, he's actually he's asked me, and I can't pull it up because if I pull it up, then we lose contact. But he asked me. If there was active DCH, CPS, whatever you want to call it, case with Sebastian. And I said, yes, he's missing. I was told by the sheriff's department that they had to report it. So, yes, there's an active case. Is there anything other than that? No, there's not an okay. active case. So my, my statement I told you is true. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I, I get it, the active investigation or, but yeah, you, you, but you did really, maybe it's just because of text, but you did make it seem like there was, there was no, like that, that this was the first time that, that they'd ever been involved at all. No, I, I didn't insinuate. Now understand something, words on paper are simply words on paper. Whatever okay. emotions you put behind them is directly a, a proportionate to yourself, not me. Oh, sir, I didn't. I didn't put any emotion behind it. I'm just well, saying. Well, what you're saying, you're trying to insinuate on this show. No, no. Yes, you did, sir. Notice how he's trying to turn the cable around onto Josh. It's not me. I'm the victim here. Let's turn it back onto Josh. He's the one who's trying to insinuate that this was going on or I had this open case and I didn't have this open case. He's the one turning it all back on. No, Josh won't play. I've heard, I've seen Josh have people phone, a certain person phone him up and threaten Josh on his life. Openly. I'm alive. He, this guy threatened Josh. And he said, you best phone the police because I am going to effing kill you. You best. Please phone the police. Right? And Josh could sat there, calm as daisies, and said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But Josh won't sit there and have someone blatantly Tell him one thing in a message, then come on here and alive and say something else. That's the only reason Josh went up there for was to call him out on what he was saying in the text to what he said on the show. Sir, yes, because not, you just I'm, stated, you I'm just stated. You just stated that you said that I made it sound like this. No, I didn't. I told you. I gave you a direct statement, gave you your answer, and that, that right there is the, what, exactly what I'm talking about. Then you called into the show and you said, no, you're lying. No, I'm not lying. So call a spade a spade, but make sure you're right. Now, to be honest with you, it has nothing to do with finding my son. Having an open case by child services has nothing to do with uh, your stepson, not your son, stepson, it's Seth's son, you're not his father. 
you got blood. Right? And I think if I, it wouldn't surprise me if if at any time, like when I've been having these little arguments back and forth at home, it wouldn't surprise me if Sebastian turned around one day at any time and said, You're not my father. Because all stepchildren have said that you're not my father, or you're not my mother, out of anger, right? But you've just seen how he's so combative when he's talking against with a guy, with a man. It triggers me, MG. It triggers me to the point where I want to punch my laptop. Because I feel like punching his face. Right? Now, that Peter Hyatt said, the best thing you can do, right, is let them talk. Let them talk. Because the more they talk, the more they're dropping themselves in it. You don't so, think that D, you don't think, okay. All right. Well, look, man. How does DC, how does CPS have to do with anything finding Sebastian? Because if, if you're insinuating something. Well, you said they opened up an investigation. It. You said they opened up an investigation. So you tell me what it has to do with him. Because what did I tell you? That's what you're not listening. The sheriff's department told us that they are required to report it to DCS, CPS, whatever you want to call them. They are required to report it to them. That answer has yet to change. It hasn't changed any of the slightest. And, and okay, so that's the, okay, I get it. So it's the only Thank open you. investigation. Thank you. You're welcome. What's the next hard one we got? Far away. I love, I love how just sort of shook it down. Right, okay. That's the only investigation. Fine. Right? He didn't need to go into anything else. He shut it down. Because Josh won't take the BS. So good on you, Josh. Uh, and by the way, I do believe his link, the lab, go over, subscribe to his channel. It's really good. It's quite quirky as well, uh, funny as well, with some of the things he does and says. So please, go over and visit the lab. S subscribe to his channel. Okay. I'm not hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was just wondering, like, if him, like, Katie, let me ask you this, or anybody, anybody can answer. So, like, if he, if y'all were at home alone, like because Chris works out of town a lot, um, and this is, I just wonder, like, would would Sebastian know what to do if there was a house fire? Like, if it was just you and him, does he know how to handle all that kind of emergency stuff? We have gone over it with him several times. Um, talked about like what to do in case of an emergency. that what made you think that we presume that he left out the front door we never we never know 100 percent, obviously but we presume based off of process of elimination um going over it with law enforcement going over the house where things are how things are sebastian's routine um and the fact that that's the door that he always uses or prefers to use, because I won't say 100% of the time he does come in with me through another. But um, that's the door Sebastian prominently uses. That's the one that he, if he were going to sneak out of the house or leave the house for whatever reason, that's the most reasonable door that he would have left out of. Um, any of the others would have made noise or not or been. would not have been locked. Mm -hmm. so, the back door, so that the back door would not lock? 
from the outside like the front. No, Mm-mm. you'd have to have a key. So we, I can't. We, we, one. I, I'm not going to describe every door lock in our house. I mean, I that. that's, that's a surf. That's a safety thing. Yeah, but, I that. don't do that. Um, yeah, but what I can say is the only there's only two doors in the house that he could have gone out where he could have locked from the on his own or from the outside. And the one he wouldn't have gone out because of how much noise it makes. Yeah. Everybody would have. And plus, it would have been seen on camera. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that, that yeah. it would have been seen on camera. So by suspicion or reason. Oh, so you know where the cameras are then, do you? Hmm? He would have been caught on camera if he went out the back door. Right? He would have been caught on the camera across the road from the other house, the door ring doorbell, if he went out the front door. So either door, he would have been caught on camera. And it just so happened you or your wife or you and someone else was caught on camera. Whoever was that number one in that in that video, suspect, uh, well, right, number one, he was right up on trees. Obviously thought they was out of the range of the camera. That's why when number two coming on, right, they're coming dark, then all of a sudden the light comes on. Then it goes off again. And it's like, could that person who was standing up by the trees be saying, turn the light off, turn the light off. Right, you'll get caught on camera. Right, so the light's going on and off. And I think the reason that talk was going on and off was because they was walking along, turning the lamp out, the talk on. See where they are, okay. Turn the torch off, carry on walking. Turn the torch on, yeah, okay. Just keep turning on every few seconds just to see where they was walking. Right? So, and I think that first subject thought he was out of sight of the camera. And that's why his torch light stayed on. Anyway. And we have one that's very playful. We have one that's not so playful. And I like to rough house with my little Morkies and I put my hand down and they chase. But other than that, no. Yeah. All right. Justin said he wants to understand this. He said, am I understanding this? You hit him with a belt because he didn't have a belt. No. No. Okay. No, 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 no. So the question about hitting him on the outside of his clothes, on his butt with a belt. That was something that he got in trouble for because he lied to us and he got one lick. Okay. Um, sorry. Hi, 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 it's all. Oh, right. Chris said he was going to go on Smiley straight after Justin's show, but he made us all wait for hours. He made sure he was in control. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason he went on Smiley's, right, was because we was all going, oh, go on, Smiley, get him, go for it, you know what I mean? He went. Right? And we know what Smiley can be like. If she smells bullshit, she'll call him out. Right? But she was respectful. Right? She was respectful. She said she would be. That's why I could never have him on my show, on my page. I couldn't. Because I would not be respectful to a narcissist controlling whatever else you want to call him person on my show on my page i couldn't 
Even if I had 20,000 subs, I wouldn't have him on my show. Sorry, not going there. Anyway, so did, what was he saying then? Did you hear what he just said about the belt thing? He gave him a lick. He got punished. He gave him a lick. So you're letting your child, some man who you've known for a few years, married to for two years, hit your son with a belt. Right? Good to see you in here, Hazel. Right? There's no way, no way on this earth, I don't care how much I love the person. If he wasn't the father to my child, there's no way he would touch that child. Right? He could say, look, that isn't right, you can't behave like that, blah, blah, blah. But he laid one finger on my child and he'd be out the effing door. One finger. And I don't care how much I loved him or he loved me, he'd be out the effing door. He wouldn't lay a finger on my child if I was ever to meet a man like that. And I've never been that sort of person. I've always said, once I left home, there's no one else who's going to tell me what I could do and could not do. The only people who could do that was my mum and dad, right? Even my husband didn't dare tell me what to do or what I couldn't do, right? I remember once he brought me, uh, before we got married, this snow jacket. It was really, really nice. And um, then he, when we got married, he brought me another item, of, uh, other items of clothing. And I, it was nice, but it's more like the items of clothing he was buying was for going somewhere really, really nice. Right? So, say he's going to his mum's or something. He said, why did you put that top on I brought you? Okay? No. That's not the right setting for that top. Plus, don't tell me what to wear. Right? And my mum used to say to my husband at the time, you've not learnt, have you? You've not learnt. My mum told him what I was like. And he said, go. Don't call a bluff. Right? Do not dare me. Do not dare me to do something because I will do it. You know what I mean? If someone said, I dare you to jump off that mountain. You dare me. You really want me to get, you're going to dare me. You know what I mean? I'm up in their faces. And I'm more like that with men than I am women. Right? Because I grew up with three older brothers. I had two older sisters and three older brothers. So I grew up with my three older brothers. So, even though they were there looking, keeping an eye on me, constantly, right, they knew they didn't have to worry about me. Even my son said once, said, I'm not worried about my mum. I mean, she goes out anywhere on the night time. I'm more worried about the person who's going to attack her because she'll knock them out and put them six foot under. So, that's what I'm like. That is what I'm like. I will not stand for BS. I won't stand for lies. Nothing. And no one, no man, no woman is going to tell me what I can do, what I should wear, where I can go. Nothing. That's why I love living on my own. I love it. Because I can eat when I want, dress how I want. If I don't want to get dressed one day, I sit in my pyjamas all day. You know what I mean? If I want to stay in bed all day, I can stay in bed all day. No one tells me what to do. And no one will ever tell me what to do. So someone like him, oh no, me and him, we would not shout. We wouldn't. Anyway, we'll go on. Let's see. Mm. Let's 
So why the three-way call? So, well, because I'll give I you. I was I'll, hysterical yeah, okay. and screaming and crying and frantic. And so he told me to mute my phone, and he's the one that actually called because at that point I couldn't even make words anymore. So not only that, but if uh, folks know the area, when you call 911, you go to a central dispatching unit. You don't actually go to your local PD unit. You go to a hub on a cell phone. When you tell them where you're at, then they redirect you to the local PD. We don't. Just notice a minute. Can you see that comment on there? Right. Hold on. I'll take this one off. It says, not only are narcissists highly sensitive and quick to anger, hmm, but they are also self-centered individuals who enjoy attention. Yeah, I've said that. It's all me, me, me. I'm the victim here. Right. Enjoy attention and stimulating a reaction out of others. Even a negative one, yeah. They thrive on the attention, even if it's negative. He's thriving on this, right? Now, what I've noticed with the father, Seth, who my heart breaks for, right? Breaks for. He's got blisters on his feet, from what we've been told, right? through all the walking he's done, everything. For three weeks now, he's been out there looking for his son. It's heartbreaking. When you heard him in that first interview, when he stood there and he said, no one owns my son, but God, whatever he said, he said, but he's my son and I want him back. Give him back. He's not yours, he's mine. I love living on my own, Hazel. I really do. Again, my TV controls are my TV controls. I watch what I want to watch on my TV. Not, I don't have anything like sports or anything on my TV. Yeah. Yeah, I... There's some... It could be because she's... Perhaps she is slightly... Um, <clears throat> autist perhaps she has not got the she could be on the <coughs> sorry <coughs> got a dry throat it could be because she's on the spectrum of autism right on the spectrum so that i not having no eye contact is one thing right they always look away or look down or they won't make permanent eye contact and I think he's just put her into such a, he's got so much control over her. It's like she's not, she's not sure what she's saying is right. Did anyone, did, who watched that interview by, oh God, the last interview they had with the YouTuber before, when I was at the home? Who was it now? Can't think. He was talking, and while he was talking, she piped up and said something. And all of a sudden, you just seen his hand come down onto his lap, and you heard that slap on his hot leg. And so she said, for feck's sake, what are you butting in for? You know what I mean? He did not like it. I saw his face. He was not happy that he was in her saying something. And she put it in by saying something about Sebastian, and he did not like it. Because she wasn't doing as he was telling her to do. It's like he's losing control. She's on the verge of cracking. She really is. Because I know, she knows something. She may not know where Sebastian is. She may not know that. But she knows something. But... I've also heard that she can be very manipulating as well. Or something like that. Very manipulating, controlling. Perhaps to make a perfect pair. You know what I mean? But he's definitely got more control over her than he says. 
It's like people said in in Smiley's live. We're saying, why don't you let Katie talk? So you go, Katie, talk, please. I'm not stopping you. He's giving her permission to talk. What the hell? You know what I mean? If some guy said to me, and you like talk, I go, don't tell me to talk. If I want to talk, I'll fucking talk. I'll do my French. But I will, you know what I mean? But he's literally saying, Katie, just talk. Talk to them. It's giving them permission sort of thing to do it. And it's always oh, so controlling. I just want to put my fist through the screen and punch his lights out. It's a good job I don't know him personally because uh, I think that thing with the belt got a lot of people. Really got a lot of people that did. He got me. And I thought, and what Peter Hyatt said at the beginning, how he believes the mother's locked him outside as a punishment. And perhaps it's just what it's cold on you to get warm and gone walking off somewhere. Or something happened to him outside. You know what I mean? But something definitely happened. Like, that into when, I'll keep going back to this one point. When I first asked Chris, um, not Chris, I don't want to say his name, CP. When I first asked Seth what the home was like when he got there, what was the, the wife, the mother's home like, he said it was immaculate except for Sebastian's room. That word, that one word, Told me everything except. Told me everything. Why would the police go in and trust Seth's room, uh, Sebastian's room, but not any other part of the house? They wouldn't trash a room. You know what I mean? They'll only trash a room if they're looking for D R U G S or hidden money or things like that. But when they're looking for clues as to where he could go. They're looking around the room, looking at is if he's got a diary anywhere, if he's got notes written anywhere. They're looking for them, so they'll be looking in the drawers. Right? And things like that. Did he take any clothes? So they'll be asking the mother, are there any clothes missing? But they wouldn't be trash messing his bedroom up. So why was his bedroom a mess? Because on Sunday, he's had some sort of meltdown, right? And I know from my grandson, when he has a meltdown, he goes into, he will walk. <coughs> if I had a sergeant in my hallway and say I had a fire on it, um, something like that, I can guarantee you, if he walked past it, he would knock the whole lot off. He'd knock it off. He goes in the bedroom. He pulls his do the do rag covers off both the bunks, both bunks, his bunk and Olivia's bunk. Right? Well, the top bunk is for Ellis and my other grandson. The bottom bunk is for my granddaughter. Right? But he pulls the covers off both the bunks. He's going and empty uh, this one big toy bag I've got with all little toys in. He literally tipped the whole lot off up on the floor. He tipped the other Trouble toys I've got up there. He knocked his other toys up over the floor. He just literally trashes the bedroom. It takes me about 10 minutes to clean it all up. But once it's calmed down, in about 10, 15 minutes, just leave him alone, he'll calm down. He can't hurt himself. He's only breaking his toys. He's not doing any damage to my stuff. But that is how he behaves. And I think Sebastian's had a sort of meltdown. And that's when they put him outside as a punishment. To calm. It's sort of like, so go outside. You can go outside until you calm down. Do you know what I'm saying? But his safe place, like Ellis, his happy place, well, not happy place, his safe place where he goes to calm down is 
the bedroom. He'll either go his bedroom or mine. Right? And he'll go in there and he'll calm down. And I think that's what happened Sunday. He's had a meltdown. The mum's not happy about it. She's put him outside. And he's going to walk, walk about. And then all of a sudden she can't find him. Seth comes home. Um, pardon me. Sorry, Seth. Uh, CP comes home to find him. To try and find him. Don't know if he did find him. Don't know if he come home or not. You don't know. All we know is there's two fucking lights in the backyard, in the common area. But according to CP, it's not easy even their common area. It's not torch lights, as I suggested. It's fucking aliens. Yes, we've had aliens come down, clock and start in your common yard and just toggle around your common area, just for the fun of it. At the same time, that round about the same time, that we reckon. Uh, Sebastian went missing. Bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to continue a bit more with this. I don't live inside city limits, so the local PD is... ...that we talk every evening or during all throughout the day we call each other here and there we chat off and on that's how we're involved and we're our version of spending time with each other because you know on a different situation where you know both people come home from work at a normal time you sit down you have dinner you you spend time with your spouse and you know it, it's hours of time that you're spending with them we don't have that physically when we're separated by work so Thank you. I'm muted. Sorry. Sorry, I keep doing that. Because I haven't got my headphones on, so I have to keep muting when I put the video on. But no, I'm saying there's no way I would be, if my husband was alive, would I be on the phone with him for two hours every night, even if he worked away from home. I'm sorry, I wouldn't be. As I just said, I'd be lucky if I had someone for... Enough to talk to him for 10 minutes about 
After about 10 minutes, I'll be going, you know what, there's nothing else happening. I'm going. Phone me whenever you want, but I'm not answering it. <laughs> anyway, I am going to let you go back and watch this because it was just a bit more to see. Um, we spend it on the phone. You know, we talk while we're having dinner and, you know, we most of the time the phone's on speaker and Sebastian talks to him and whatnot, but that's the way that we are still spending time and talking about our day. And Yeah, I just, I mean, if it's, you know, every night, I mean, that would kind of <laughs> get boring to me. I mean, everybody's different, but I just wondered if it was something normal, you know, that y'all did, or it was just that one night, you know, or a couple of nights before. Right, and this is another question I've got. You're staying in a house where it's just you and your son, right? You work for some security company or alarm system company or something like that. Why haven't you got your alarm set on, set on your house? Why haven't you got your, your outside lights set, set turned on? Why haven't you got any of that turned on? You're in a house on your own with your son and you've got none of your security system set up. That's off with me as well. From your smell. Thing like that. I, I didn't. Well, you know, I mean, we got a missing kid, yeah. and that's a problem. Well, in my opinion, I mean, you have to. I got myself to the stage, and I think who is Katie up here? Yeah. Or Chris? I can't. One of them's up here, but I can't tell. I think it's Katie. <laughs> Katie, can you hear me? Can you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm gonna put this back down here for Chris again. Yeah, I had to reload because my it wasn't going anywhere. I was having to do that. That's why I couldn't catch none of the questions. Oh, I was so behind y'all. I apologize. Okay. Was Chris in Memphis the entire weekend? Okay, here we go, guys. Was he in Memphis the entire weekend or did he leave? I think he already answered that one. He said he was there the entire weekend. And then they want to know, did he take a polygraph test and pass? And, uh, oh, okay. So, mate, you can answer this one, Katie. Why did Sebastian wear pull-ups at your house? So Sebastian wore pull-ups because, or when specifically, when he was having his regression, when he was having issues with um, wet in the bed or wet in his pants. He had issues where he would wet himself at school um, and then occasionally would wet himself at night. Um, now, I know that, that Seth went and said that that never happened at his house, but I do know that it did um, of at least a few occasions that I know of. Um, but that's not the point. The point is, is that he did go in and out of pull-ups based on when he needed them. So if he was during a regression um, phase, um, he would go into the pull-ups. And then once he, you know, got back on track and he was not having um, wedding issues at school and or home, um, he would go back into, you know, regular underwear. Um, and that, unfortunately, is just something that has been happening for you know, ever. Oh. I don't know what you view. I don't fully understand children with autism, right? But I don't know if they can regress. Well, I do know they can regress. But if they, they regress backwards, it's for a reason, right? It's it's also a sign of anxiety because is he scared of something? Yes, we know he's scared of something. Or was he scared of CP? Yes, he was. Was he scared of his mom? Possibly because CP wasn't there all the time. 
apparently CP was down in Memphis, but CP would have control of the mother on the phone call. And he'd, he'd be saying, well, if he does this again, do punish, give him a punishment of this or that. Right? So he had, that's why they had these like two hour phone calls when he's down in Memphis, because he needed to keep that control of her over her son. Right? Now, he, he regressed and she said it went back a while. I think this started after she got married. Right? Because you heard him say it himself, when we first got married, there was difficulties because there's now a third person, another person in the house who is disciplining, bringing in new discipline rules and all this lot. And it's not, with an autistic child, you can't come in to a home and start saying, well, now I'm here, we are going to do this. You will do these chores and you will do them when we ask you to do them. No, you can't do that with a child with autism. You can't. You can't do it with any child. You do that to any child, they're going to rebel. They're going to rebel and fight back. And I think he had many times, not just once, maybe many times, said, you're not my father. And saying that to CP will get his back up. She's done all of them. If you haven't watched, you want to check her out. Well, I, um, I will watch that, Pat Brown. But it's a bit like that Peter Tyrus. He hit it on the head. You know what I mean? You hit that nail on the head. If you can't, you can't control a controlling narcissist, this person like CP is not going to uh, gel with a child with autism. Because in his eyes, in CP's eyes, he probably doesn't look at it as autism. He probably just looks at it. Well, it's just being obstinate. It's just being naughty. Not me. But it's not. They don't think like us. For If you've got a child with autism, you've got to think like them. She has said herself, when when he's playing with children, friends or other children, if he's got his mind set on something like he wants Minecraft, right? and they don't, then you're going to have that pull on the children. And that's when the arguments start. Right? I have it with my, with my grandson. Right? But luckily, some children understand my grandson. Right? They do. And there's other children that won't come near me. But he's six years old, but he's like a ten-year-old in size. Size clothing, yeah. He's in size 10 years clothing, he's six years old. He's a big lad, tell you that. He's one big lad. When you have the school photos of him, they have to put him on the back row, right? <laughs> and he still towers above them all. It's quite funny when you see him in the school class photos because he's out in the back row and it's not like you can't miss him. Like sometimes you think, where's my son, where's my daughter? And you're trying to find your son or daughter in that crowd, yeah? Group of children. No, my grandson, he's so tall, he's, and he's up there and you can't miss him. So, but you have to, he's got, he has a mindset and when he's got that mindset going you can't get past that mindset you really can't and that's what the problems was with Chris he didn't like that um, Sebastian was late to potty train and has had issues going back and forth with it basically his whole life right um uh, so, okay, 
So why is there a problem? I feel, um, I, mean, I mean, I feel it shouldn't be a problem, but somebody's asking about the GoFundMe. Why are you so mad about that, Chris? So initially, I forgot what day it was. Myself, Katie, and Seth were in my house. And I had brought up the question that said, hey, and, you know, should we start a GoFundMe page to start trying to raise money to uh, add help to this however we can? And the police said, hey, no, I don't recommend doing that because then if you do that, it looks like you're trying to do this for profit. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So we all three had an agreement. We weren't doing this. And next thing you know, now there's the GoFundMe page up there. So, okay. And, um, but, okay. So why don't y'all just start your own GoFundMe page? I mean, it's like, there's no sense in arguing over it, really. I mean. It, well, and it, so all of this has kind of stemmed because you got a family member who wants to go out there and blast some family matters to the public. That's where it all stems from. Like I said, this is not family problems. This isn't about family matters being public. It's about Sebastian. Right. And we've got some family members that aren't necessarily kosher about everything right now. And they're upset. Their emotions are, I got it. Everybody's been at one point hot headed, you know, in, in some, if somebody tells me they're not, that's a lie. Everybody's been a hot head at some point. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we got a missing kid yeah. and that's a problem. Well, in my opinion, I mean, you have to put everything aside. I mean, your feelings, her feel, and I know it's not easy. You've got, you know, you, you honestly have to do this. You're going to have to endure a lot. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not going to be pretty and it's probably going to be worse. I just sat here with another case, two and a half years, uh, going, th going on three years in June and the things I've seen out that is, it's not been pretty and no results have been unfortunately found and how did we go from talking about the GoFundMe page to the fact that there are certain family members that want to put out all our personal information how did we go from that to that what the GoFundMe page got to do with the grandmother, I, I think he's on the band, telling him to tell us where Sebastian is to give her grandson back. Otherwise, within the week, right? So he's got this week to get this sorted. Otherwise, she's going to tell the police, the FBI, TBI, whoever, everything. Now, I can't believe the TBI have not spoke to anyone. What, MG? It was Chris. Yes, Hazel. The problem wasn't Sebastian, it was Chris. And it annoys me that she is sticking up for Chris. She should be sticking up for her son. She should be saying, yes, she should say to, to her other half, just be honest, there was problems between you. It's got, this is what I'm saying, how did we get from having a GoFundMe page, right? To talking about the family air and their dirty secrets. What has that got to do with the other? It hasn't. It's got nothing. The family haven't said anything. Not that I know of. And I know you hear everything, MG. <laughs> so. But you see. They are right 
in the area. Set has to come what an hour away to get to there. It's traveling. It's traveling all over the place to outstake everything, right? But he has only said this today, well, yesterday about the social uh, social services. Well, we call it social services now. Um, I don't know what they call it in the US. Um, he's only brought that up now. Because obviously, Josh mentioned it to him in, a te in the text messages. So he messaged Josh back. And then he thought, I've got to talk about this. Get out there. Get this out there. Get my version out there first before the family start talking. Right? So then he'll come out and say, well, yes, I did have social services. I've had a mummy twice. Now that's saying something when you've had social services on your backside for twice. Twice, if not more, that we don't know of. And I'm sure if there are more, a certain YouTuber will find this out. And we all know who that YouTuber is. They'll find it out. Right? I'm sure if Nancy Grace had their people dig into it a bit more, they'd find out as well if there was more. I got to hear from the grandmother because she knows a lot and he knows she knows a lot and that's what he's scared of now. He's running scared. He knows that she is going to talk. She's got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? She just wants her grandson. To grow. He no doubt doesn't like the family. He wants to. Yes. I you know what? I was thinking this the other day. You know when it mentioned the last week or whenever, when they mentioned how he's going to live with the father. Well, last week, last night, I don't know if you've seen that show with Josh, uh, Josh, but he did say it was supposed to have happened last year. So, uh, Sebastian was supposed to come and live with his mum and dad last year, with his dad, sorry, last year. Right? So it showed then. They'd only been married a year, really, by then. There was problems in their marriage with Sebastian. Right? But I think, as well, Chris would love him to go and live with his dad. Right? Because he then got just control of Katie. And no one to stop him but herself. She's the only one then who could put her foot down, kick him out, or whatever, right? But sometimes women, especially when they're in a controlling relationship like this, it's very hard for them to get out of. It's not, I don't know, see, I'd have no trouble kicking someone like that out the fucking door. In fact, someone like that wouldn't even get through my front door. So, yeah, I think he's isolating Katie. I really do. He doesn't like the family. He doesn't. So, anyway, we're going, I, I missed this bit because I did go to bed. Like, because I had to, like, gone three o'clock by the time I went to bed. So I missed a lot of this, the ending part. Um, but I, I'm hoping that it will be different with Sebastian. I know that the people there care. There's no doubt in my mind. And one reason that there's no doubt is, again, that's where I was born and raised. And I have family there. And I know. And there's good people there. There are good people there. And... You know, I, I see the difference. I really do. And, you know, sometimes this internet is harsh. But one thing that I see different with the police there is they do come out and they say, we we do want your help. We do want 
you know, and they're in and they're asking and they're begging and they're doing everything they can to find Sebastian. And they're trying to put him first. You know, it's not hard when you have others that have come up missing during this um, search for Sebastian. Um, you know, because everybody deserves a fair shot, you know, Raleigh, um, everybody deserves a fair shot to get found. Um, and I know that's breaking everybody's heart, you know, your hearts, everybody's hearts that this had to be scaled back a little bit, but you can't give up. We can't give up, you know, and sometimes you're going to go to bed crying. You're going to go to bed, you know, no matter what people think of you, it does not matter. You're going to hear things. You're going to see things. But again, the most important thing is Sebastian. Because no matter what, no matter if he's out there, well, good, fine, or not, he deserves to be found like anybody else. He is somebody, you know, and he's your somebody and he's Seth somebody. He's Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. That's who he is. As his father said in that one interview, the first, he doesn't belong to no one. No one owns him. But he's my son, and then I want him back. Right? He's Sebastian Rogers. He's his own person, and no one should be keeping him away, keeping him from having his life. And he wants to have a life. You know what I mean? It's so annoying. When you get people like CP, who is controlling, narcissistic, and a few other choice words I'd like to say, but can't. And does not, and then you've got a 15 year old who is rebellious anyway. All teenagers are rebellious, right? They really are. And you don't know, like, because when he's at his dad's, he's allowed to go on YouTube to watch the Minecraft videos. Now, on Nancy Grace, he said, said, yeah, but that's social network. He said, yeah, but he said, he can't chat. He just watches the videos. My grandson does the same. He just watches the videos. He doesn't go on any chat sites. He wouldn't have had to type it in anyway he's six years old you know what i mean he sat on my laptop the other day and my messenger was open and poor mg got this blast of all his letters coming across in her messenger right and i said oh sorry that was my grandson he sat on my laptop right and he said oh did i do something wrong i said no sweetheart you haven't broke it luckily i'm quite surprised because he's a wife Right, but he wouldn't know how to chat to someone if he's talking to someone. People have, have trouble understanding me because I'm from Birmingham, I still got that brummy accent. And when people get to know me, they're okay with it, they understand it, right? And um, it's a bit like my grandson is very loud and when he talks, he talks really quick. I thought I talk quick. He talks really quick. And so his words aren't coming out fully. But we know what he's saying. And then I've got a granddaughter who's three, born in Scotland, right? Both grandchildren, all three grandchildren born in Scotland. But my granddaughter is picking up some of the brummy accents. Like when we go, hiya, she comes, hiya, and mom, we say, where's mom, and that's what she says, where's mom, 
Mom. And it's so cute to hear her saying these brummy, brummy words, the way we, we, the way we pronounce it. I don't I know what Hazel. I think if Seth could have got him last year, I think he would have. But the way he put it across last night was he was supposed to have him last year, but then his behaviour changed. <laughs> His behaviour changed. So he said to Sebastian, he said, right, you stay there with your mum then now because your behaviour is getting better. You know what I mean? We'll give you another chance to stay with your mum. So perhaps Sebastian didn't want to go at that time, wasn't ready to go and live with his dad. But then again, he was. You know what I mean? So I think Seth would have had him last year if he'd have pushed it a bit more. And just said, you know what, no, we'll have him this, I'll have him this year. We're not going to put it off. We'll get him into a school. He's got him, his name down, registered at a school already for him to go to. Which is heartbreaking because, again, he's not going to, unless we can find him alive. And what did they say? How they had to go back down and get the camper? The, the trailer, he went back down and stopped the night and drove back the next morning. They told the police where he's going and when he, when he was going and when he was coming back. Uh, was that a trailer checked by the police while it was down there? Yeah. So, uh, I, that's the question I want to know. They did say the trail has been checked by the police, but was it checked when it was down in Memphis? Did the police go get the, Memf the police in Memphis to go and check the trailer? You know what I mean? If they didn't, then, for all we know, he could have had him in the trailer. And when he went back, whatever, a few days or whatever, a week later, went back, he stayed overnight. He had plenty of opportunity then, again, to move. If it, if anything has bad happened to Sebastian, he's had every chance to get that poor body, or that poor boy's body moved. So I, I got to know if that trailer was checked when it was down in Memphis. Not when you come back to Tennessee. When it was down in Memphis, did they have that trailer checked then? So, anyway, let's... And like... Sugar. He's, you know, one dessert and he wants to eat the whole box. So he gets up in the middle of the night and sneaks snacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's standing in his room and hides the wrappers under his bed. I mean, it same stuff basic kids do. It's just one, I'm not going to have bugs throughout the house. We told him you eat in the kitchen, you eat in the dining room. And they
Right. Sorry, MJ, I was muted. Uh, as I said, I keep doing that because I have to put it on silent when I'm playing the um, video. Um, she's by making them phone calls to telling Kate, Katie, to punish him. Now, say uh, he's, out, he's having an argument. His mum won't let him do something, right? And he's turning around and he's saying, going off on one again and and he's threatening to leave to go to his dad. She's probably told this to Chris. And Chris is saying, Well, open the door, put him out, tell him to go. You know what I mean? Just tell him to go. Open the door, put him out. So how do we know that it didn't happen something else? That he's turned around and said to the mum, I, I wish I was at my dad's. And Chris has said, open the door, tell him to go out. When he's just there, so sort of threats, just open the door and tell him to leave. You want to go to your dad? Go on then. Because I'm sure if he was leaving to go somewhere, he just took a jacket, he just took his coat, he just took his phone, and he would have took the cash that they found in his bedroom that he's been saving up. He just took all that back. Right? His dad said he would have either he even have took a bag because he could put his um switch game in there and some other games that he likes. He could put them in a bag. He could put uh, maybe a few items of clothing in a bag. He could put, done all that. Right? Because there's certain things uh when an autistic child, like my, my grandsons, they love their laptops, their, their tablets, right? Now, I brought my one grandson this little gaming thing. It wasn't expensive. Well, the first one I brought him was really cheap, and it stopped working after about two weeks. And everyone who brought this toy off TikTok, was saying the same thing, they stopped working after a couple of weeks. So I ordered another one, a bigger one. Yeah, this one is brilliant. It's only been charged, I believe, once since he's had it in October last year. Once it's been charged. And he plays on it all the time. Now, when he comes to mind, he likes to have that in the bag. He likes that in the bag, he likes a tablet in the bag. And he likes his, his, you know, them beanie teddies, but they're really heavy. You can use them as a door stopper. Well, a neighbour who lives above him gave it to Ellis. He's seen it in her flat once and he likes it. So she said, you have it then. He has to have that, that teddy thing in the bag so that he can go to sleep with it on the night time. So there's three things he, he likes to have. So I know if Sebastian was leaving on his own will, he just packed, he just took that money, he just took his phone, and he just put shoes on, and he just put a jacket on. And he probably would have took his switch. If nothing else, he just took that. So for none of them to be missing his shoes, switch his phone are all at the house then he hasn't left that house on his own free will he's probably been kicked out put told to go out you know what i mean something happened on that sunday and that's the missing puzzle piece and we won't find out until a sebastian comes home at all well or b we find him and that's the only way we're going to know, get that missing puzzle. Because if something bad has happened to Sebastian, right, that it'll be hard for an autopsy, right, but they will be able to tell possibly how he died, more depending on what the, what the body's like, right, but 
if he comes back all well and unharmed, and I do find him alive, then they're going to want to talk to him as to why he left. Because they are not going to let him go back home until they know why he left. Because they can't say, oh, he's home. Yeah, I'll take you back to your mum and your stepdad. They're wanting to know why first he left. Because is it safe for him to go back there? You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, I cannot understand how calm, well, I can understand how calm he is, but I've noticed over the weeks she's got a lot calmer as well. I don't know if she's on medication. But did you notice how, like, you know that interview Darren and Candice did outside the house? Was how Don did all the talking. He wasn't even there when it happened. When Summer Moon, Summer Summer went missing, he wasn't there. So he's only going by what Candice had told him, right? But she's like out in another world. You know what I mean? She just got this one fixed station in her head, and that was. So I've been abducted. And then she said something like, if I was there, no one would hurt her or no one would have done that. Done what? What has been ha what happened to her for you to say that? And I'm getting the same vibe off Katie as a as a D Candice. I'm getting that same vibe. It's like she's, she could be on medication. You know what I mean? I know a lot of parents who've had children go missing where the doctors have had to sedate them and everything. So she could be on some sort of medication to keep her calm. But you just don't know. Anyway, we just going to watch a bit more of this, okay? Bear with me, everyone. Just a bit more. Right. Done with it, you put it in the trash. That's the only thing we've asked. Him. <laughs> okay, so they're back to Rachel. So they're saying that what happened to her head, that's what they want to know. And what that's to her head? yeah, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, if they could clarify a little bit more, I don't I don't know. They're saying you almost killed her. I don't know. Huh? I, like I said, I don't know anything about Rachel. Okay. Um it's posted on the board. Uh, uh, yeah, if I can't see the comments for some reason. Okay, it comments, says you got killed, Rachel. There was blood everywhere. Where, sir, you thought she was dead. I don't well, know. Where thought I? No. Okay. Uh, that's news to me, but no. Um, it could be. Uh, they're paying. They paid to ask that question, which I'm just now getting to, and they've asked it two or three times. That's why. Uh, I just can't. I don't know. It could be a troll. I don't know. I listen. I have no idea. I don't mean to make y'all feel. No, 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 no. I'm not. I just. I'm sitting. I'm like, and just like her head, blood everywhere. Um, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a new one on me. So I Paula. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't really know what's going on there. Again, my, my mother actually still talks to Rachel. I mean, that, that that right there ought to tell you the kind of relationship that my family had with her. We we still talk to her. Yeah. She's got her two kids. So where that all that stuff's coming from is very interesting. I But no. <laughs> well, there y'all have it, folks. Sometimes, sometimes families do still talk to exes and their moms and dads and all that does. So I don't know. Um, did L.E check vehicles or and your trailer that they that you took to memphis you, yes ma'am okay so yes, that they're saying yes yeah. yes all right let's see um oh thank you for coming a youtube member beautiful sunflower <laughs> yeah uh the medicine that sebastian is that life threatening if he don't take that medicine no Okay. 
it's not it's not life threatening, but it's not good that he don't have it, you know. Right. Yeah. And like anything else, it's not good because if you're ta if you take medicine for thing that makes sense to me, but I could be wrong. Like who does why does it matter who gets the word out about your child as long as it gets out? Oh, did he drop down again? Whoops. No, he's still there. You still there, Chris? Uh hello, can you hear me now? I don't okay. know what happened. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Like the uh the whole thing about I heard I heard your question. My answer is simple. We want correct information out there. We don't want false information. Which unfortunately somebody has put out false information. And the downside is is I mean it one anchor uh in particular, I don't need to put the name out there. It's okay. But the the one news anchor, instead of just reporting, you know, kept insinuating stuff, which in itself is a problem. Um, and it drew the focus away from Sebastian and started focusing more on, you know, who did it? Who did it? Well, these people are, you know, and, and that was a problem, you know. So we don't want false information. None of the parents, none of the family members want false information. We just want the accurate information out there and people to focus on finding him instead of bashing parents or bashing something that they don't like, you know, and just if notice we've gone off script again. Why is he going on about false information coming out? Nothing was asked about that. So why is he going on about false information coming out and he just wants the correct... We want the truth. How about that? How about that, Chris? How about telling us the truth? And stop being so controlling. You know, so he's calmed down again as well since Josh left. Since Josh hasn't been up there, he's calmed down again. He does not like men. He will not acknowledge that man. He thinks women he can control. He can't control me. And that's why he's very combative when it comes to being talking to men. Because men don't take his bullshit, neither do I. If people would put that focus in the findings of so here's something that's very unique. Um, and I mean, we we talk about it whenever they come and they talk to us or they call us on the phone. They, this is a case that literally has got all of these agencies stumped. Okay. And I, and and I'm saying this very openly as far as, you know, playing devil's advocate. Let's say one of us was suspected of foul play. Something, let's say something, right? Right. There's no way that we would outdupe all these agencies. There's no way. However, this 15-year-old boy has managed to outdo everybody. Call him Houdini. He always wanted to be a ninja, and we kept goof around. Well, he, he has officially done it because poof, nothing. You know, and, and it's, you know, the cops have told us this is a case that will go down as a researched study case where they're asking the questions and looking for answers. And, Literally nothing. Everything they try to come up with, blank. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is just, it's really strange. It's really strange. Uh, I don't know. Um, 
I mean, I wish, I wish there was something, anything. I do too. If I could get it, you know, out there somehow, I mean, from what I see, I don't, I don't know for a fact there's uh, almost, I'm not, let me tell you, I'm not going to say, but it's your ultimate decision. I would say, I don't know. I'd watch that one because what I don't want, I don't want these creators who's going to end up like Summer Wells case and then be fighting each other. I don't want that. Okay. This, this is about, this is about him. Okay. This is about him. But what I want well, you to consider is I want you to consider Chris and Katie to please right now, early on, go ahead and let's get his name and face out there and please consider talking. I mean, you got Jay for justice. You got, and she's sweet. I mean, let, I mean, just let bigger channels, please talk to them. You know, the ones that's really for the kids, please. I'm just looked up because I'm nobody and you did make a promise to me. Trev time, Trev time is, you know, I know you spoke with him already on another channel. I don't know how you feel about that, but he's, he really is for the kids. Well, you know? here's what I'll say about Trev and I'm going to, and I'm going to say this open and publicly. It's okay. So Trev sent me a message and he apologized. Mm -hmm. He apologized to me and my wife because he made a mistake. He got wrapped up in, I'm going to call it the sauce. He got wrapped up in that with jumping on the bandwagon of assuming and accusing us. Now, he went back and he has changed that. <clears throat> he has apologized. Mm -hmm. That, that right there alone, I'll do your show. Mm -hmm. Because you did it. You, you did what you were supposed to do as a man or a woman, excuse me, a new, yeah. new age thing nowadays. Sorry. Um, righteousness, the right thing, that will get you a lot farther than the rest of it. You know, I mean, it's it's one thing. And that's what I'm saying. The JLR. This dude. He's going to have to make a public apology. He's going to have to make it public for me. Okay. Um, JRR is never, ever going to apologize to you. Never. That will never happen. The only time he'll apologize to you, right, is if Sebastian is found alive and it comes out that you had nothing to do with it. But he won't apologize for finding that information that he did about your exes. Because in your eyes, your words that has nothing to do with Sebastian. So he's not going to apologize to you about that. And Trev told, I will, I think he'd go on Trev's time. I really do. But I can't see him going on Josh. I really got, I would be gobsmacked if he went on Josh's. Right? Because I'll only apologise as well if it comes back that he had nothing to do with it. Then I will publicly come on my page and say, CP, and I'll call it by his proper name, I apologise. But not until we find out the truth and somewhere there is a piece missing. And that missing piece is from Sunday, when they got home from their meal, from that time to 6 a.m., something happened Sunday night. 
as that one guy said in his hypothesis at the end of what he's writing about. It's on a, a page about Sebastian for Sebastian, right? He's got all the links there to all the interviews and everything. And then he put on at the bottom his hypothesis and he wrote it all down in his own words. He said then that he believes that Something happened on the Sunday night. He said, CP said he was talking to Katie from half nine until 12. He had plenty of time from 12 o'clock to leave his phone down in Memphis, drive up to Tennessee. Right? Now, all we know is that person whose talks kept going in and out. See, that person could have been carrying a body. And that's why that talks kept going in and out, on and off, on and off. Right? That could have been a handover to someone else. But, you know what I mean? But for them to now say that uh, sent the dog followed to the uh, construction site was construction site was a false positive as someone put up last night how do they know it's a false positive how can these people who work with the dogs know that that was a false positive or even the police know that the dog had the sebastian scent it followed that scent and it took them to the construction site in fact someone even said it took them to this pond which wasn't a pond it was just where they, there's a big hole window and water rain water settled in there right or something like that so they drained it all it was only knee deep but they drained it and there's nothing there but the dogs had no more scent after that had nothing so you tell me how a dog can have a false post when you He's following the scent that he was given. And I trust these dogs a hundred percent. Right, they are highly trained dogs. Blue Towns, as uh, Peter Hyatt said, or was it on Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace, they said Blue Towns can follow a scent up to seven days later. Those dogs should have hit on a scent. Uh, all the dogs out there, they should have hit on a scent. Be him going to the bus stop to get the bus to school. Be him going to a, 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 a local shop or something, if there's a local store anywhere. Uh, be a play area he went to, which he walked to. Be a neighbour's house, which he maybe go to. Those dogs should have hit up on a scent to all them and then they could have said oh it's hit here oh this is where he goes to get the bus school <laughs> yeah yes hazel is he doesn't like it when he doesn't have control he really doesn't well i was going to look at another video tonight but this is going on for career habits i can't believe that it's like coming to 12 o'clock, right? But, you know, I'm going to leave it with this video. So thank you to Smiley. Right? But the one he did with Josh, where the father went on, Seth went on, it's more of a relaxed chat, you know what I mean? And... Um, And I think we needed that. We needed that sort of relaxed chat and a bit of humour. Where they wasn't always talking about Sebastian. They did talk a lot about Sebastian, which was nice because you got to hear more about Sebastian, about what he liked to play and how good he was. And they sang about uh, this one game they play. And the father said, I've got 140 something kills. And Josh is going, I'm not that good. I'm not that good. You know what I mean? So
So they was having a bit of a laugh and a joke about the games they play online. And how the father said, except uh, Sebastian up with an account for himself. Right? For when he was at his gags. And Sebastian turned around and said, no, I like to play on your account. Even though he couldn't chat with no one because he didn't have the headphones. His dad, his dad didn't let him use the headphones. Plus his dad was always sitting by the side of him or near him so he could see what he was up to. And I think the restrictions they put on him, that his mother and his stepdad put on him, was a bit harsh. As I said, you can always let a child go on the internet and put uh, perimeters on him. You know what I mean? There's, why they wouldn't let him go on the internet and set perimeters as to what sites he could go on? Why? Right? Like I said, okay, you can go on the tap. You've got a, a laptop here or a computer. You can play on that, but it can only be used when, you t when you're in the kitchen so we can, or in the living room so we can keep an eye on you. Right? So they could have set it up so then they could have seen if he was chatting to anyone. You don't know. Doubt it because when you're playing these games, you haven't got time to talk. You're too busy playing the games. So that's like, why well, you have the headphones so you can talk out, talk to them through the headphones. Right? So without the headphones, you can't talk to no one. So they could have set that up like the dad does. He doesn't let him have the headphones. So he knows he's not talking to no one. He's just playing the game with people on there. And the only people he has on his app are people he knows, the father knows, and trusts. Even they phone him up, they message him and say, do you know your son is on your account? And he's got, and Seth will go and say, yes, I'm sitting right next to him. But at least they let the father know that Sebastian is on, logged in on his account. So he's got all the perimeters set. And um, when he said, yeah, he likes to go on YouTube. And now he's going, oh, but that's a social network site. Yes, it is. But not in the app, in the way Sebastian uses it. My grandson goes on YouTube. Both of them go on YouTube. Right? Yeah, my daughter tends to put it on, the, uh, on her TV. Right, so then she she knows what uh, her son is watching because it's on the TV. And my grandson he goes on YouTube and he likes to go on my tablet and go on what he calls my YouTube, so that he can watch these other channels like Minecraft. But there's no talking in it. There's no chat to it. It's just a video. Um, I just think that like, isolated him. They really did isolate him. And she said that yeah, she would take him places where he could mi mingle with people. Right? But I don't know. He's 15 years old. Perhaps he doesn't want his mum there all the time. Perhaps he'd like to go somewhere with some friends, make some friends and go somewhere with them without his mum and dad being there, uh, stepdad being there, sorry, all the time. Without someone watching him over his shoulder. Because they've got to release the, as I'll say, the mother's got to cut the umbilical cord. Because he's 15 now, in 10 years' time he's going to be 25. He's got 10 years to start socialising, making friends, and all that lot. If he doesn't start that soon, he's going to find life really hard. Especially if he just, say, graduates and he can get into some sort of college or higher education or something like that. He's going to find it hard to interact with others if he doesn't start interacting with them now. Right, so I just think that I was like too much, way too much. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that.
And thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for popping in, Hazel. Nice to see you in here. And you, MG, and everyone on Twitter. Thank you for being with me. I'm sorry if I if ever so often I went muted. I'll get my headphones charged up. So I'm going to go. And well, I just wanted to. I'm glad I caught the video just when at that point where they started talking about social services and the fact that it did use the bad time, Sebastian. And I don't think he used it once. I think it was every time. And uh, I mean, that, as I said, if he's working away from home, right? Why did he not come home on the weekends? Right? Why didn't he come home on the weekends to spend time with Sebastian and spend time with Katie? You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense to me. Why was it she had she would go down to him on the weekends when when Sebastian was with his dad, she would go down there to him. Why couldn't he come up? And I, I think he was coming up during the, on the weekends. Or even if he had days off in the week, he maybe popped up. You know what I mean? Because why would Sebastian? The only thing I can think of is CP had that much of a control over Katie that she was doing the punishment which is why he regressed back, right? His anxiety is kicking in. He regressed backwards. He wasn't going to the toilet. He was too, he was scared, right? He was scared to go. Oh, Clutch and Pearls is doing a live about this Smiley's uh, live. <laughs> so if you want to see it from any other perspective, go over to Clutch and Pearls by Justin. Justin. Right. And if my cat don't stop scratching at the door frame, I'm going to shoot the fuck. Right. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm going to go because it's 12 o'clock. I've had a long day. Very little sleep. Um, as for the apology of JR, JR, forget it, Chris. He don't care that much about you. He doesn't. Because he will carry on doing what he wants to do and not what you want him to do. And you know to say, you said when um, Shred Khan emailed them or messaged them and apologised. You know how, did you hear it in his voice? I could hear it in his voice. How, oh yeah, I've got someone to apologise. I knew I was right. I'm in the right. They was in the wrong. Yes. Anyway, I'm going to go. So you can all get to bed because Hazel, it's got to be 12 o'clock. Yeah, it's going 12 o'clock now for us. So, I'm going to bed. So, thank you for being here tonight. And I'll be back tomorrow. I'm um, going to see if I can catch up on that video that I've just been told. So, I might watch that tomorrow morning. Or I might watch it now, but I'm going to quick speed. Alright. So, thank you for being here. Good night.